Usually when uh, I go to a workshop or uh, I meet people, <coughs> poets from other countries, uh, after two or three days they start documenting on the internet about Romanian poetry and you find out that one poet comes to you and asks you, uh, and what about Nikita Stanescu? Uh, but with, with Par was completely different because he remembered from the first day a lot of Romanian writers he had read. He had read uh, Sioran as, as a teenager, <laughs> of course, like everybody. So, uh, but each day he would remember another Romanian uh, poet that he had read. <laughs> and I'm sure that it wasn't about documenting because he was always remembering uh, poets that are not so well known in Romania, like Urmuz. Who else do you remember? Gerasim Luka. Gerasim Luka. Gerasim Luka. The Letrist. Okay, Isidore Isu. Yes. Isidore Isu is really not well known in Romania. So it's more like a French. From Botoshan. Yeah. Dan Sochi is also. Okay. Yeah. But this is this is because this part of surrealist and uh, very experimental approach to, to literature is much more uh, active for, uh, for in, in Sweden. And I, I connect this with the fact that you are using different uh, arts for uh, performing your poetry. Uh, so uh, I wanted to ask uh, Par, what was the... Uh, what, what was your... The manner that you prefer for performing your poetry what is the most special for you from the presentation that you've had. And right now, I mostly prefer performing together with uh, tape recorders and radio and, uh, and uh, computer sometimes uh, doing some electronic music, trying to win with a pro poem, uh, with a reading. And sometimes with like text projecting to, to the sounds instead of reading the poem, just having projections. And I really like using the radio a lot because uh, in that way I can't really, I don't really know what the radio will send right now. So I just start the radio on the Swedish like uh, talking channel, like the news current affairs channel. And then I, I read a couple of lines and then I start the radio and then I get some more information into the poem and this juxtaposition uh, and this uh, sort of ready-made practice with the, the radio uh, gets other elements in the poem uh, like the elements of time and the element of place and an element of uh, uh, maybe also uh, there could be a more vulgar element in the poem because sometimes you get some very bad commercial radio and you get some parts of some new pop song in the middle of the poem and this is a way of working with chance and with uh, random randomness in another sense uh, and this practice I'm very interested by someone uh, like a guitarist called Keith Rowe that was is one of the main electronic uh, live improvising musicians, so I'm very much uh, a part of also a, a live improvised uh, music scene, and uh, so, uh, so that is as important for me as writing the books. I wanted to ask Lynn because she uh, works for a magazine that is also cultural but also very much involved in social problems in uh, Göteborg. Right. I want to ask you, uh, my impression is that the Swedish uh, poetry scene is uh, one of the most uh, active in this area of involving other arts and uh, you have a very well established scene for this. I, don't, I, I would say that the, um, one of the things with, ma with making a magazine like this um, is that you have a chance to work with uh, writers that haven't maybe uh, uh, published any books, but they have very good material in a certain field or a theme that we are working with. This magazine is a cross-genre magazine, or what you call it. It's literature and essays and art. And, and, and that 
I would say if the magazines are important in some way in connection to like a young or I don't know, um, a younger scene, um, it is because you um, the magazines work differently with specific texts or specific um, pieces from them that they could be like you could publish these uh, pieces and edit them and, and work with them and then that's the way this is like the first level of being published. But I don't know if it's connected really to a... Um and uh, actually Paul is speaking about some specific magazine. Uh, yeah. It's a basically. Mm, uh, I think. Uh, I'm a bit part of the magazine with the Swedish vowels and that include that are included in the word poetry in Swedish, Pussy. Uh, and uh, they worked a lot with sound poetry and with uh, visual poetry and with uh, how text is used in conceptual art and, uh, and about uh, uh, conceptual poetry uh, as a genre. And uh, in that way, it has opened up uh, uh, that a lot of people uh, work with uh, both artists work with text and uh, and the poets uh, work more with the other other fields also. So that's basically and this magazine has been so uh, there was a productive uh, the people that are involved with this magazine. So so the sound poetry is issue is like six hundred pages about sound poetry and the, the magazine is almost like a monster. You can't really handle the magazine and then two weeks later, no, no, two months later, you get 500 pages about prose and then 300 pages about documentation or something. So, so it's, uh, it's almost like a full-time job to, to read that magazine. And, uh, and in this way, both working with quantity and quality and introducing so much stuff from France and from uh, USA, and, and that has changed the Swedish poetry environment a lot and just being yeah, that you are a poet time writing books and doing two readings a year at the book fair and then the book fair and then at, uh, at some library somewhere now and uh, now it's more like a live scene. Uh, uh, I have to say that the Swedish poetry uh, influenced somehow the contemporary some of the contemporary Romanian poets, for example, the last, the last uh, book of Elena Vodoriano is very influenced by the experience with the Cetate. Um, and um, so Elena was also in the first, yeah, the first. Uh, workshop, translation workshop, and when she went there, I understand that she was very much uh, not convinced at all. Yeah, yeah, it's but the kind of uh, a way to make poetry. Yeah, I think she was, she was uh, very skeptical, but then she thought about it more. And uh, yeah, and some parts of some something in my in my old book is uh, is, uh, is from there in um, not in the content, but somehow in the. Distance, more like the the tone. Your poetry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know if we influence them in any way. No, thank you. Not consciously, but okay. I basically have been reading mostly in Denmark, uh, and uh, uh, when I'm reading a poem that I think is funny in Denmark, nobody laughs. Uh, that is one experience from Denmark. Uh, um, but they understand. Yeah, they understand, but it's sort of in Sweden you can use humor in your poems and you can use that in Denmark also, but it tends to be like that it's forbidden to laugh that the poetry is in Denmark, uh, or maybe they are too drunk in order to laugh or something, but they go through that at least. I think sure a Swedish poet told me in Göteborg that we love the Danish people, but they do everything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's the lesson. <laughs> um, we, um, this, uh, I, I made a poem.
poetry and accordion show that is like um, readings and we play the accordion but it's me and one other poet and um, a musician and me and the other poet we didn't know how to play the accordion when we started to do this so we learned while we were doing the show and we went to Ukraine to play this um, we, we've been working with the theme sentimentality so we use the accordion which is for in Sweden it's at least it's very sentimental in many ways uh, instrument and we we wrote text about sentimentality and Anna who is the, the musician she wrote uh, music sentimental music for the accordion but like contemporary sentimental music in some way and we were really nervous about going to Ukraine because like we have many texts that are at least parts of them are we think they are funny in some way or we we work with humor at least uh, and uh, yeah the whole the whole thing about being sentimental and doing something that we weren't sure that we are not really sure of when we do it on stage mm. there were many factors that we were nervous about about going to Ukraine <coughs> we thought that, I don't know what we thought but. What I wanted to say was that there was a really good clash of a completely, not a completely different, but a different sense of sentimentality and a different um, um, connection to the accordion and a different connection to poetry, which really made it like the best, like our best show, because people were um, laughing and also like talking into the into the performance and doing. There were lots and lots of people, and yeah, so I, I wanted to say something about working with.